Welcome to Evolution of Self with me, Britannia. So this week I want to speak to you about low self-esteem. <laughs> and I'm laughing because I'm going to share with you how I've come across this particular topic. And that's through the wonders of online dating. Um, unfortunately, that is what is open to me at the moment. And I've been on a number of dates and I've met some really wonderful people through it. But I've noticed that there's a common theme and that a lot of the people that I meet, no matter how successful or gorgeous or good looking or whatever they happen to be, a lot of them seem to have really low self-esteem. Um, so it's kind of, I suppose, got me thinking about it. And if that is kind of an indication of society at large, then I thought maybe people would appreciate me sharing something on the topic. <laughs> and I'm kind of not surprised in a way that it is something that people would experience generally, not everybody obviously, but a large proportion of people because everywhere that we look, everywhere that we watch or read or listen to, depicts the ideal. So if we go onto any of the social media platforms, people don't share or they don't tend to share the things that aren't going right in their lives. They share everything that's wonderful. They try to create these perfect lives that they share to the world. We're also inundated with adverts or movies depicting what the media represents as the ideal kind of person. Now, most people don't live up to that ideal. And most of the ones that do are trying so incredibly hard to live up to it, and that's not all of them, that actually their lives aren't really enjoyable because it is exhausting to try and live up to that ideal. And if you're watching all of these things as you go through life, and seeing all of these perfect people and these perfect lives, it can very much lead to, you know, looking at yourself and feeling that you are less than what you'd like to be. And as you get older, most of us have experienced relationships that haven't always worked out or that have been hurtful and damaged us in some way. And that can also add to our perception that there's something wrong with us, that there's something not lovable about us. But what I want to share today is that really isn't the truth. When you look inside yourself, there is something unique and beautiful and just so exquisitely you. And when we focus on those things, then we tend to feel happier and more sure about ourselves. There's also something that my cousin shared with me many years ago. I don't actually even remember having shared it with me. I think we were talking, looking at our feet. I have no idea why we were doing this. And I remember her nails were beautifully painted and I can't remember if I'd had painted my toenails or whatever. And I might have commented on it or something like that. I can't really remember the conversation. It was so long ago. And, but I do remember what she said. And she said that in life, we should make the best of our worst attributes. <laughs> and ever since then, it's something that stuck with me. That there might be parts of us that we don't really like. I think most people will look in the mirror and think that they should be, look slightly different. If you've got straight hair, you want curly hair. If you've got curly hair, you want straight hair. If you're tall, you prefer to be shorter. If you're short, you'd prefer to be taller. It's just the way of life. We're not always happy with what we've got. But I think to build self-esteem, instead of looking externally and comparing ourselves to others, we need to look at ourselves and start to love ourselves as we are. There's some things that we can do to build our self-esteem. So instead of sitting there and thinking that there's nothing you can do, it's to look at those bits that you don't necessarily like and to try to embrace them and to make the most of them. And there's somebody that I've always quite admired and that's Queen Latifah. Um, I can't remember which character she played, but she's in Chicago. And she's a larger lady. And the reason I like her is because she oozes sexuality. And it's always made me see that if we don't necessarily fit into what Hollywood or, you know, advertising world portrays as the ideal person. If you can change the way you see yourself, then the world will see you differently. And Queen Latifah, for me, is a shining example of that. She's not slim or willowy or, you know, your normal ideal of what a woman should be if you look at the media and all the sort of social media and all those kind of things. Yet, she, if you watch her in her movies, she is so incredibly self-possessed um, that she oozes sexuality, as I've said. 
And this isn't to say that you need to dress provocatively or that you need to behave in a certain way, but it's also to recognise when you shame yourself. Because low self-esteem doesn't come from what anyone else thinks of you. It comes from the story you tell yourself about yourself. So you need to find the things that you love about yourself, the things that you really like about yourself, and to focus on those rather than the things that you think are imperfect. Or, as my cousin taught me, to find the things about yourself that you think are imperfect and learn how to make the most of them. Learn how to embrace those imperfections so that you can stand solidly in who you are. Because I know when you focus on the things you don't like, that intense focus can make you believe things that aren't true. I remember as a teenager um, obsessing about how fat I thought my thighs were. And I can promise you now that I would give anything to have the thighs that I had when I was a teenager, because I doubt very much that ever in my life they're ever going to be the same again. And I look back and I laugh at myself because my perception of what they were at that time was just so completely ridiculous. And I suppose that's what I'm sharing with you, is the more that we obsess about these things, the more that we focus on the negativity and we repeat that negative story, the more we train ourselves to see ourselves as imperfect. Because every thought you think about yourself goes into your subconscious and it builds an idea of who you are and what you are. And when you have that idea, then who you become is that idea. You dress a certain way because you feel ashamed, you want to cover up, and I'm not saying this is necessarily what you do, but it's something you might do, but you will behave in a different way. Maybe you dress more provocatively because you don't want people to see your imperfections um, and you'd rather they see you sexually than otherwise. Maybe you put on lots and lots of makeup to hide who you truly are or you wear false eyelashes or, you know, fake breasts or whatever it happens to be. Um, obviously, I'm speaking from a female point of view, but men do different things as well. And one of the things that I've noticed as well through this wonder of online dating is so often people misrepresent themselves. Not everyone, but a lot of people. People will say they're taller than they are. They'll say they're younger than they are. They'll put up photos of when they were younger. It's all because they don't actually feel acceptable as who they are. And yet, for me anyway, and I'm sure for other people, when you meet someone who truly accepts themselves, it's actually so beautiful that it doesn't really matter what they look like. It's almost the shame that they feel. You can feel it when you see them. So t learning to turn this around, learning to love yourself and to be comfortable as who you are is incredibly important because it affects the relationships that you go into. It affects the people you meet. It affects how life reflects back to you what you fear. So if you fear that you are imperfect, and whatever it is that you do that's your different, your particular way of covering that up, the world feels it when you go out into the world. And because of that, how the world receives you, how you interpret that reception, confirms to you that which you fear inside. And although you can't change the thoughts that you have, and you can't stop those thoughts from coming up, what you can do is try to refocus. And when you catch yourself putting yourself down or making yourself wrong or beating yourself up because you're not as perfect as you think you are, you can start teaching yourself to focus on things you like about yourself. Focus on what you love about yourself, the things that you admire about yourself. Because the more you focus on those things, the more your thoughts will go that way, the more you will train yourself to look for things that you are happy with about yourself. The more confident you will become, the more confident you'll be when you're out in the world. And the more the world will see you as that too and reflect that back onto you. I hope this has helped in some way. <laughs> it's a bit of a tricky topic, but I thought it was quite apt. As usual, if you're interested to get hold of me for coaching or for any of my online courses, the links are below. As I've said a few times now, I'm doing a monthly Ho'oponopono session. And if you want to join me for that, the link will be below in the show notes as well, along with a link to a video about Ho'oponopono, should you be interested to learn more about it if you don't know about it already. Have a super duper week. Uh, so much love from me to you and go out and shine. Bye bye.